Hello, my name's Kevin Wensley. I'm the Director of Operations at Offshore Sailing School. And I'm here today at one of our beautiful Southwest Florida locations. What we're going to be looking at now is actually how to set your spinnaker. In this instance, we're going to be doing a bear away set. So if we just remind ourselves, the pole always goes up on the windward side and the sail always hoists from the leeward side. So in this instance, we're setting up for a starboard tack, so we want the pole on the starboard side. Uh, and what we need now is to have somebody in the crew go forwards and actually raise the pole to attach it to the mast. So the person in the cockpit's actually doing the lifting and then Brian's just guiding the pole up there. Great. Making sure that the after guy is in the end of the pole. And then the pole itself wants to be perpendicular to the mast and it also wants to be perpendicular to your mast head fly. Um, but for the hoist, what we want to do is have the pole all the way forwards and the control to get it forwards is the four guy. There we go. And now we're going to attach the sail to the lines. So the white line is the, the halyard and that's going to attach to the head of the sail. So now we've got an after guy and a sheet. We know it's an after guy because it actually runs through the pole. The line that runs through the pole is the after guy and the line that is attached to the, the clue of the spinnaker is the sheet. So the sheet's on the port side and the, the guy's on the starboard side right now. Now we're at a phase where you've got the pole set up, the lines have run. Um, something to look at actually is quite as interesting is that you'll notice that we haven't put any stop knots in the end of the, uh, the spinnaker sheet or the after guy. Um, the reason that happens, or the reason we don't do that, uh, is because when the sail gets full, it can get very, very heavily loaded. Um, if your line has a stop knot in it and it runs up against a block, of course that's going to stop it. Uh, but it'll be super hard to get that knot undone. And frankly, what we'd rather have is have the sail fly free like a flag where it's completely depowered and then drive the boat underneath it. What we don't want to do is have a line so heavily loaded causing us to come out of control that we can't readily release. Uh, the next step in terms of the hoist, uh, making sure that we've got the, the turtle bag or the spinnaker bag attached to the boat so that when the sail comes up, the, the bag doesn't go with it. Uh, make sure that's attached. And then we're going to go ahead and do what's called the pre-feed. And the pre-feed is where we start to pull the sail out of the bag and towards the bow of the boat. In fact, we're going to pull the, the, the tack of the sail out towards the end of the pole using the line that pulls the sail or the pole back, which is the after guy. And if we were out there and under sail, of course, we'd have the jib out and the main out. Um, as a rule, the spinnaker never wants to go up or down without the jib being there. So we don't drop the jib and then put the spinnaker up, we put the spinnaker up and then release the, and then furl away the jib. So for right now, we've got the, the tack of the, of the spinnaker sail out towards the, the end of the pole there. And then the next step would be to actually hoist the sail. So what Brian will do is when the time comes, I'll be pulling on the halyard and then Brian's just going to look up to make sure that the line hasn't got tied around anything and hopefully we'll get a nice clean hoist. As soon as the sail is up, we're going to be looking to rotate the pole back so that we can actually get it to fill with air. Uh, and if we were under other sails, once the spinnaker is flying full of air, that's when we furl away the jib. If, if we had a mainsail and it was flying at the moment, then as the boat bears away downwind, we release the mainsail, the boat turns downwind, and that's when we go with the hoist. So I'm going to hopefully do a fairly big arm over arm hoist to the spinnaker. Are you ready there, Brian? We up. Great. So then it would be easing on the four guy. Rotate the pole back to be perpendicular. Then we need to start thinking a little bit about where the pole is relative to the wind, but also sail trim. So I'm looking up to see that my pole is perpendicular to the masthead fly. And at the same time, Brian is working with the sheet and he's easing it until he sees a little curl on the luff there and then trim to, to stop the curl. The other thing you can see here is that the, what's called the clue of the sail is flying a little higher than the tack of the sail. And what we want to try and do is keep those level. And that's where your twings come into play. If I just pull down on this twing, you can see I've got the tack and the clue flying at a, at a very similar height now. And that's really what I'm after. So yeah, nice set, no twists. The pole's where it needs to be. Brian's very busy with his trimming, it's a, and the trimming on a spinnaker 
is a, uh, is a very continuous operation. It never stops. You ease until you see curl and then you trim to stop the curl. All right, once we're underway and we're heading downwind and we're moving fast, it's time for a little bit of tidy up. So that's how to go about setting a spinnaker on a symmetric sail.